Welcome to Jets Talk. My name is Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, we're talking a little Jordan Whitehead, possibly DeAndre Hopkins, things of that nature. Uh, so let's get right into it. Jordan Whitehead renegotiates his contract, restructures his contract, creating $5.3 million in cap space for this year. It kicks $3.3 million into future years. They added four void years onto his contract. So like a million, almost a million each year. And then after the season, contract will void. And then the Jets will get hit with a $3.3 million dead cap hit in 2024. This is huge. Basically, he's kind of, he's getting guaranteed money where he wasn't getting guaranteed money before. And it's in the form of a signing bonus. So it works out better for him in the event the Jets were looking to cut him. And it works out for the Jets because it creates more salary cap space for us for this year. Jets are currently sitting at $24.4 million in salary cap space, which brings us to a whole bunch of different questions. What could happen? The New York Jets on the horizon with a New York, uh, with a new big deal potentially in place for a few different guys. It could be Aaron Rodgers. We're restructuring his contract. Maybe they're looking to move as much money as possible into this season to try and mitigate some of the cap hits in later years. Maybe they're looking at finally signing our boy Quinn and Williams to his big, massive, long-term extension with the team and facilitating that by adding a little bit more cap this year makes it a little bit lighter in the future years, potentially. Or could it be that the New York Jets are still in play for DeAndre Hopkins? Now, we're not really sure what has to, uh, what's, what's gonna happen. Robert Sala says, oh, we love our current group. We love our current group. If you loved your current group, you wouldn't have gone after Odell Beckham Jr. So, so I'm not sure if I'm really buying this from Coach Sala, but I think it's the right thing to say either way. Because look, obviously Joe Douglas has to make his moves and move pieces around and see what happens. And if we have a new receiver comes in, we're going to love that guy as well. So I think where a lot of people fall on this is Corey Davis sitting with $10.5 million in potentially freeing up of cap space. So really the Jets could have like $34.4 million. Right now, the Jets are sitting at the third most cap space in the NFL as it stands today. So that is a whopping number. What could the Jets possibly do with this? Now we heard DeAndre Hopkins earlier today had a very, very interesting tweet. If you guys didn't see it, hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. Where could I have seen this before. I see you, DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> he wants to be a part of the Talking Jets. Come on down. Join it. Now I know the monkeys are a very popular thing anyway, so it's not like a, a big thing. But it's big. Come on. It's literally in the same emoji order as we put on the shirt. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I love it. So what, what do I want to see happen with all this sort of stuff? And I heard rumors that DeAndre Hopkins may not even cost as much as Odell Beckham Jr., which to me boggles my mind because I, I do think Odell is, Odell's a, a very good receiver, but the injuries are a huge concern. With DeAndre Hopkins, the talent level alone, I would say, suggests he's a better receiver than Odell and not to mention he's been healthier. I mean, he got whacked for the PED suspension, but by and large, it, given the two options, I would definitely take DeAndre Hopkins over Odell Beckham Jr., it's just interesting to see that the Jets haven't appeared to be in play. And I think part of that comes from maybe DeAndre Hopkins not maybe showing as much love towards the New York Jets. And the Jets don't want to be seen as like, oh, we're going after this guy, upset the apple cart inside the, the organization. And then, you know, he winds up going to the Bills or something like that. So now you wind up having an irritated wide receiver room potentially and uh, not having DeAndre Hopkins. It's interesting. I would be cool with getting DeAndre Hopkins. I do think that it would be an upgrade at the wide receiver position, not to mention, God forbid, something happens to our number one wide receiver. Hopkins could really fill in as the top dog. Now, I've said it before, Corey Davis, the Packers tried to trade for him. So at some level, Aaron Rodgers did want to play with Corey Davis at one point. And again, Hopkins probably was not an option in conjunction with Corey Davis, but I do think Rodgers would be perfectly fine throwing to Corey Davis this season. Now, I hope the Jets are freeing up some of this money so that way they can give Aaron Rodgers a little bit of money this year so that way it doesn't totally, totally cripple us next year. But really the big one is Quinn and Williams. I want to see Quinn and Williams sign long-term. I've been kind of projecting four years, $100 million, which would be $25 million a year, which would be $1.5 million a year more 
then the uh, next closest guy, I don't remember who it was, if it was, I don't think Dexter Lawrence got that. They're all like right around there, the 22, 23 and a half million dollar range for all these defensive tackles from his draft class. And he's been the best one with the least amount of playing time or percentage of snaps played and like more productive than anyone else. So the guy deserves to absolutely get paid. And I'm hoping with all the shifting of money, that's kind of what's going on. The other player I really, really think it would be a cool thing to take a look at. Like keeping Jordan Whitehead on the team for a lower cap number, big, big deal. But that would not prevent me from possibly poking around Kevin Bayard from the Titans. Now we do have our offensive line coach from the Titans. Maybe there's a, a thought that there's some kind of connection, even though they're you know obviously different sides of the ball, different position groups and whatnot. But there's, you know, having a friendly face in the room doesn't necessarily hurt. And at 30 years old, I would think Bayard's looking to gun for a Super Bowl at this point. And I think if we're being honest with ourselves, the Titans probably are not that kind of team at this junction. And if they're asking him to take a pay cut, maybe he would say no. Either he gets cut later on in the process to save like $14 million for the Titans, or maybe he, or I think it might be an $8 million savings. I think his contract, if traded, is like $14 million a year for the next two years, which it's definitely more than I think I see Joe Douglas paying. We haven't really pr prioritized safeties and the, the value uh, of that level of contract, but maybe he's more apt to re-sign a new deal with a Super Bowl caliber team as opposed to taking less money for a team that doesn't seem to be uh, moving in that direction right now. So guys, let me know, what do you think the Jets are going to do with the money saved from Jordan Whitehead, the $24.4 million that we have under the cap right now? Let me know in the comments section down below. And as always, go Jets!